On May 25th, Prime Minister Philip Davis outlined his administration's first budget. It followed upon the COVID-19 pandemic, which stifled economic growth and overshadowed everything. The price of fish, chicken, and so many other food items is going down. I'm Jillian Gray, and I'll let you know what this budget means for your pocketbook. I'm Keishal Adderley, and in this edition of Up Close, we take a look at the new focus, recovery and restoration. We did not want to do any tax increases, and we didn't do any tax increases. Projection, our projected old term for revenue is $208 million more than what was budgeted. That's a significant increase in revenue. Construction is an incredible indicator of the strength of an economy. And I think what is encouraging to us is that this administration is recognizing that. This is Up Close. Well, just how does the government plan to realize this economic comeback that's been forecast? Well, in this segment, we'll talk to the experts about the numbers that suggest that things may be finally taking a turn in the right direction. It's a routine legislative event, but Budget 2022 follows upon some extraordinary times. Budget 2022, The Way Forward, features a series of indicators which suggest that things may finally be taking a turn. There's also relief for business persons and everyday consumers who endured some lean months. We sat down to talk with Prime Minister Philip Davis about a very different future that he foresees. Taking to the floor of Parliament, Bahamian consumers were top of mind for Prime Minister Philip Davis. He previewed a series of customs duty exemptions to buffer the inflation hovering over global economies, largely due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the chain reaction events of exploding oil prices and supply chain shortfalls. We have reduced the duty on a significant number of food items to bring relief to our citizens and residents. Yes. You will hear more about re this reduction in customs duty on food items during the course of the debate. Recognizing all those things, the persons who are most impacted by that are the least amongst us. The Bahamian people have been suffering for quite a long time. Dorian, the virus, and the shutdowns have been pointed out. And so my primary objective in this budget was to see how I could bring relief for the suffering of the least amongst us, which meant um, identifying initiatives to assist in the lower, lowering the cost of living. It required uh, um, and that is what we did in a lot of instances by lowering um, customs duties on, on a lot of food items. We have allocated a lot of money in investments in growing our own food and we are going to be encouraging that. And so that was one of the primary objectives. Boosting the income of public servants was also a feature of the budget, as Prime Minister Davis announced allocations to bring increment payments up to date, increase salaries and the minimum wage, all of which he says were long overdue. Yes, we'd like to do more, but at the very least what we can do is pay the public service what they are owed and attempt to keep a consistent um, review of salaries with increases to, to ensure that they are at least getting uh, what they are deserving. Again, this is a part of our whole exercise for the lowering the cost, lowering the cost of living um, or in combating inflation. We, the, the civil servants were owed increments for years we're intending to make that current. Civil servants have not had an increase 
um, in salary for years. We intend to uh, make good on our promise to um, give increases across the board to the civil servants and at the same time seek to, to um, raise the minimum wage. We will have to sit down with the, uh, the, pub the public service unions and the various sector unions within the public service and agree those numbers within the constraint of what the, what the country could afford at this time. But we intend to ensure that we try to get the public service to in a position where they are at least satisfied with their remuneration and take home pay, and at the same time, they be able to live within uh, a society where we expect all to, to be happy. Dwindling complements of precious teaching and nursing staff will also receive attention, including pay increases and special incentives. We have, we have provided funding to increase the salary of teachers, but we have also provided funding to pay what I call a retention bonus to teachers and nurses. Yeah. The most vulnerable among us will not be left out. A permanent increase in social assistance seeks to ensure that their needs are met. We have made a permanent increase in social assistance by 50% in comparison to the pre-pandemic levels. This increased assistance is to be disbursed through the reintroduction of a conditional cash transfer program, which was commonly referred to as the RISE program. Yes. Now these relief measures weren't arrived at in a vacuum. When we come back, the key targets the government is looking to hit in the coming months and important economic benchmarks the country is getting closer to meeting. The 2022-2023 budget is cause for optimism for Minister of Economic Affairs, the Honorable Michael Halkidis. With the first nine months of the 2021-2022 fiscal year reflecting that revenue performance had increased by $617.6 million, or 50.2%, to more than $1.8 billion when compared to the previous year, Minister Halkidis says that among other things, this is a green light to get moving. It's intended to um, uh, in, infuse some optimism into the, um, into the community. Um, of course, we have to be realistic, but we're very confident about the um, recovery that we're seeing in the economy. And we just wanted to spread that message um, uh, to the Bahamian people and stakeholders at large that the economy is improving, there will be opportunities for them in terms of uh, business, in terms of employment. That optimism is backed by some other impressive numbers. Financial Secretary Simon Wilson says post-pandemic economic performance has been exceptional. Projections are projected out term for revenue is $208 million more than what was budgeted. That's a significant increase in revenue. Normally, we struggle to achieve our revenue targets. Um, no, usually, we run the 97 to the 98 percentile in terms of achieving our targets. This time, you know, we've exceeded our targets by close to 8 percent. Know, that's, a, a, that's a significant achievement. As a deficit reduction is forecast, Wilson says it's a welcome development, especially as the government seeks to keep debt under control. Our target at the beginning of the fiscal period um, was 7.8%, and now we can probably end up with an overall deficit target, including the proposed supplementary budget of 6%. That's a 2 percentage point difference, 1.8 percentage point difference to be exact. It, it, I think the first thing it means is a sense of, of the right signal to the market that the economy is recovering. That should bode well for us in terms of as we access credit in the, in the open market. So that's a good thing. Um, what it also means is that we are able now to pay our vendors on a more timely basis. And that's very, very important. 
The excess money will go toward paying outstanding balances, including $56.7 million for insurance arrears for public servants, $45 million in arrears owed to the Water and Sewage Corporation to settle balances with vendors, $30 million to complete the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium, $19 million in outstanding payments owed to Doctors Hospital for COVID-19 emergency support, $6.4 million in outstanding rent payments, $6 million in outstanding legal claims, and $4 million to refurbish public clinics. Because, that we, because where we are coming on the pandemic, we have very high and contrary debt levels. The plan um, is to reduce our need to borrow for interest. So we have something, a, a second measure we call a primary deficit. And the primary deficit me measures how much we borrow for interest, to pay interest. You know, when you're borrowing to pay interest, that's when things are really, really bad. Next year, our primary deficit is going to be $4 million projected in the upcoming budget. And when you think of that in perspective, this current year, our primary deficit is $276 million, which meant that we borrowed $276 million to pay interest. You know, next year, $4 million, the year after, it's going to be positive. Once the primary deficit is positive, it means that your level of debt is decreasing. You know, so at $4 million, that means our level of debt next year, our growth, debt growth level next year will be almost stagnant. Yeah, it is a good place, but you know, the, it's now to get a primary surplus. Once we get a consistent primary surplus, it means our debt level growth is, is, will become negative. Because we won't be borrowing to pay interest expense, our borrowings will be not our borrowings will not be more than our repayments. It's the statement that most consumers listen out for. No new taxes. With the windfalls in revenue available to the government, it's an assurance they've been able to give. One of the things we wanted to do, as, as you know, the Prime Minister said, we did not want to do any tax increases and we didn't do any tax increases because we believe that what we have in place, if we do a better job of collecting it, uh, we won't have to impose additional taxes. And so what re the Revenue Enhancement Unit does, it ensures that we're doing a better job in our administration, in our, in our collection, uh, in terms of audits, making sure that those who can afford to pay and who owe taxes are given an opportunity to pay. And so that's ongoing. We've made some strides in terms of um, uh, human resources and equipment. And as the weeks and months uh, go on, uh, we'll begin to see more of the results of that enhancement. The meat and potatoes of the budget will mean some literal changes to your food bill, as the Prime Minister has previewed. For chicken, yeah, chicken, yes, chicken, yes. For whichever, whichever area, you know, whichever area it's a, there's a deduction, it most certainly would help. Still to come, find out what bargains new customs exemptions will afford you during your next trip to the grocery store. What's for dinner this week? Chances are chicken is on the menu. Fortunately for consumers, it's also on the list of food items that's subject to lower duty rate. We remove the duty rates on chicken, chicken parts, which is um, cut up chicken, not the whole chicken, um, from 30% to 10%. We remove the duty rates on eggs. Eggs are also impacted by inflation from 30% to 5%. Um, they, I think those are the two big items. We also reached, reduced duties on certain meat products, so sandwich meats and so forth, which they are now duty free. So, you know, you're preparing your lunch um, for your children for school and you wanted to slice turkey and, and so forth, those things are not duty free. So those prices should come down. And how does that, does that level the playing field when it comes to that, um, that fact criticism about you know, retaining fat on bread basket items? I think the pay, that, that tilts the playing field. That, so there were 20 items that were bad except. Right, on, in, in the so-called bread basket. 
um, 20 items, all right? And that only becomes an issue if you only consume those 20 items. Even the poorest of persons here in this society consume more than 20 items. And so they pay VAT on a whole wide range of things, not just on these 20 items. When they went to the food store, um, typically the bread basket accounts for about 5% of your annual or your weekly expenditure. 5%. The 95% you pay value of 12% on, the 5% you pay value of zero. So it's a false argument to say that by applying value 10% on that 5% and reducing VAT from 12% on a 95 makes you worse off. It does not. Most persons are better off. In fact, I would say all persons, every payment is better off by a broad tax with no exemptions. Food items like raw nuts, lettuce, turnips, broccoli, sweet peppers, and other produce are now free from customs tax. Prepared salmon, herring, and crustaceans went from 40% to 20%. Chicken parts went from 30% to 10%. Pork from 25% to 10%. And chicken eggs from 30% to 5%. It's concessions like these that Bahamians say they appreciate. At least on some of the food items, like uh, chicken and hamburger and steak and rice, it would be cheaper for me to buy than having to stay the same, even with the uh, reduction in fat that makes it better. It will help the less fortunate. People don't have jobs and stuff like that. But people like me, yeah, I have a job. But yeah, the things are still expensive, and it will, I guess, put little savings in your little pocket. It's a good thing that the government is doing, and uh, I'm, I'm in full support of the PLP. And, uh, you know, like any other government, just got to give them a chance to just get in. This budget also takes into account a tourism industry on the mend. Lower duty on food items is also intended to improve the visitor experience, particularly as the government looks to optimize value for money among visitors and keep this destination competitive. We're in a high inflationary environment. Um, building supplies and everything has been going up. And we're talking building supplies, you know, lumber um, and plywood is already duty free. We talk about the other things, roof trusses, um, all those other things that use um, for certain types of shingles that use for construction and so forth. We're also talking about plumbing supplies as well as electric supplies. They are being made either duty free or at a very low duty rate of less than 10%. We believe that is a, a, a strong signal that A, number one, we want to encourage investment in homes because as you invest more in homes, and you invest more, that bodes well for economic growth. But we also believe that that's a good counter to this inflationary environment we import all these things. Is, is, is that, did you do that based on the rate of construction? Is it, is it improving? Well, we think so. Certainly, certainly what we see in the family islands, um, a lot of that from foreign direct investment has been very encouraging. Um, we see some signs in the province of construction coming back to life. As people get back to work and they start to improve their houses, so build new houses and so forth. So we think it sends a, a, a good signal. Hurricane impact PVC windows, plastic roofing and rolls, lime and felt, which were all at 5%, are now free of customs duty. Basins, toilet seats, and shower baths, which were at 25%, have been reduced to 5%. It's these drastic reductions in customs tax that will cause more Bahamians to choose now as the time to build. Notably, the duty rate recessions and related to construction, I think that absolutely is a plus. 
Um, because if you could reduce the cost of materials coming in, obviously that promotes um, homeowners and home buyers to continue to make improvements to their properties and to start new construction. Uh, secondly, I think what was notable uh, from the standpoint of concession to directly to the industry is increasing the, ga the, the, the gap um, from $250,000 to, to $300,000 without the um, fee to the government for first time home buyers. Now that's very significant, we feel. With the, with the number being $300,000 and you don't have to pay that fifteen dollars to $20,000, that's kind of a nice chunk of change that you could use towards um, increasing your 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 um, size of the home that you probably could build or qualifying for a mortgage if that fifteen to twenty thousand dollars is not in there so we believe that that will certainly impact the amount of new starts and construction may not be incredible but it certainly would be i think significant as construction goes, so does the economy, according to the Bahamas Contractors Association president, who says as buildings go up, so will the country's economy. Construction is an incredible indicator of the strength of an economy. And I think what is encouraging to us is that this administration is recognizing that if it continues to, to assist, bolster, and reinforce the, the construction sector, it lends well to the, the economy of this country doing well. Investors look at our ability to build homes, buy homes, and increase our expenditure on home-related things. And they see that as an indication that it's good and safe to invest there, that this is a place that can make money because their citizens are investing money like that. That's good. So I think it translates to confidence in the Bahamas. So we certainly hope that this administration continues to make those kind of concessionary inclusions for the BCA and the construction industry. Compiling the budget is an arduous task. As Deputy Fiscal Advisor Kemi Jones tells us, the process starts months in advance as everything must be planned to perfection. It's not just a simple exercise of compiling numbers. It involves economic analysis. It involves market research. Um, actually, we do take time and speak to industry participants to get an insight and to get value of how the impacts of the policies articulated in the budget is going to trickle down throughout the economy. So it is a very detailed exercise that takes months and countless hours of research and interviews and analysis. This is Jones's fourth budget cycle, but this budget, he says, is nothing like any other he's worked on. Well, this budget, I think, is a bit different in that the focus is a lot more um, from the social relief aspect. Um, in terms of we would see increases in salaries. We've already seen increases in pensions for cost of living. Um, but it has a discernible focus on um, the persons who really need it in terms of increased social support, not just particularly because of a situation such as the pandemic, but a long-term focus on increasing social support for those who need it. The concessions wrapped up in this budget specifically speaks to the landscape of the Bahamas' economic environment. In our grand scheme of climate resiliency, VAT has been reduced on electric or hybrid trucks and cars to 10% for those not exceeding $70,000 and to 25% on those exceeding that $70,000 mark. Solar panel accessories and lithium phosphate batteries used for renewable energy are duty free. From a reduction in real property tax and VAT concessions to funds allocated for farmers and artists, the numbers in this budget all add up to one thing, real impact for Bahamians. The question of customs exemptions is always a tricky one because it's a question of do those um, reductions actually pass through the economy and do they actually pass down to the consumer. But one of the key things that the public would see is that we're moving towards a more equitable system. So we see reductions in customs duty on targeted things, such as solar panels, for example. Whereas in the past, um, the relief effort for solar panels to push a go green strategy was not comprehensive. In terms of unless you were purchasing an entire solar package, you were not able to get the exemption. So it's a more comprehensive, focused um, strategy now that's based on actually talking to industry stakeholders to see how those exemptions and how those concessions will pass throughout the economy. Food is usually a big bill for many Bahamian households, so adjusting rates on food items was not taken lightly. The question of the reduction in VAT and whether that was meaningful 
with the rebasing and placing um, or getting rid of many of the zero rating categories. That's always been um, debated. And the question is this, as an economist, I will say quite a bit of research and effort went into this. Research in terms of looking at the average um, parcel or package or what are the spending um, activities of an average household. And we did do research on this um, going back for the past 10 plus years and we see that the items on the breadbasket list actually comprise a very small portion of the average household income. Um, but we also, following basic economic strategy, the focus was to um, use economic principles of charging uh, persons at their level of willingness to pay. So if you are a major hotel, if you are a wealthy individual, or even someone in the middle income, do you really need that reduction or zero rating of a piece of cheese? Probably not. It's probably not going to impact you at all. Um, so if you are willing to pay more, why should we not allow you to pay more in terms of collecting that tax revenue? But where the budget is different and it places an additional focus is it's actually taking those tax that are collected from the wealthy and transferring it directly to the poor as a, in, as a direct cash subsidy in hand versus giving everyone else in the world and the community um, this exemption is giving it to the persons who specifically need it by transferring that additional revenue to the persons who are in need. And the public, the public will see that specifically in terms of the allocations for food support. Um, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of a sustained effort of food support. And it's based on sound economic research. I'm talking to agencies such as the IMF and other economists. So this is not just us thinking of this. It is sound economic principles that all economists have said. When you try to give benefits, you need the best method to do it versus broad-based tax exemptions is to make a targeted initiative, um, cut money in person's hands, something they can tangibly feel. That is when you make a difference in terms of the cost of living. The budget also takes into account big ticket items like a new hospital to replace the Rand Memorial Hospital in Grand Bahama, lowering the cost of electricity for BPL consumers with the use of renewables and the creation of a Family Island Development Trust Fund to facilitate Family Island improvements. The budget also prioritizes funding to address climate change, food security and monetizing the country's natural resources. As the government sets out on its agenda of improving revenue collection, and fulfilling more optimistic forecasts, Prime Minister Davis concludes, The perils are real, but so is the promise of what we can become if we move forward together. This budget provides a foundation to strengthen our nation, to lift ourselves up, to face the future with strength and optimism. This budget provides support for the here, and now, and also charts the way forward for a brighter tomorrow.